Hi, I'm Rocco Stano, and I'm here in the Kit Lit TV kitchen for another episode of Storymakers. And today we have Vera here Nandani. Yes, welcome. Hi, yes. thank you. Vera here. It, it rhymes right. almost. Yeah, yes, it well, does rhyme. Yes, and that is my Twitter handle, actually, Vera Hira. And half my family changed their last name to Hira to shorten it. But I'm kind of glad that my family didn't because then I'd always be Vera Hira everywhere. <laughs> well, we're but. glad you're a Hira with us. <laughs> Thank today you. yes and, and and your new book the night diary yes and so tell us a little bit about the book it's a middle grade novel but i like to say it's from anybody from 9 to 99 age wise but um it is being marketed as a middle grade novel and it's about 12 year old nisha who has to leave her home during the partition of india in 1947. so why does she have to leave her home she has to leave her home during what is called the Partition of India in 1947 when India split into two countries, Pakistan and India. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that that's just, Pakistan was created in 1947 during the partition, but what happened was there was a lot of conflicts between mostly Muslims and Hindus, um, and Muslims had to leave India and go over the border to Pakistan, and Hindus and non-Muslims had to leave the border and go over to the new India. Um, and so a lot of people were just kind of stuck on the wrong side and had to pick up and leave. It was a lot of people. It was, so it was about 14 million people had to leave their homes and cross borders and probably it's the largest human migration in modern history. Um, and over 1 million people died and possibly close to 2 million. It's interesting, there aren't many books for middle grade uh, readers about this topic. So yes. I'm really glad that you wrote about it. Yeah, well, my father was one of the people that had to leave his home and he was born in what is now Pakistan and, and then left for the new India. Um, and so it was something that was always a part of my family, a history that I had always heard growing up, bits and pieces. Um, and as I learned more about it, I became more interested in the greater, uh, having a greater sense of the history. Um, and then, you know, I didn't know I would become a writer, um, but, and I didn't know I'd become a writer for kids, but I feel like this is something that I think now is taught more in schools, but when I was growing up, I never heard it in any other place besides my family. So I wanted to share it that way, um, because it's a really important piece of global history that would be nice for kids to know. Tell us about the family in the book. The main character is named Nisha, and she's 12, and I think I said that before. Um, and she lives with her father and her grandmother and um, a cook named Kazi. And her mother died during childbirth, which you find out in the beginning of the book. So um, Not a spoiler, yes. Not a spoiler, um, but her mother was Muslim and her father is Hindu. And she writes letters, the diary she's writing is to her mother. And she's trying to figure out where she belongs as her country is split apart. She enjoys uh, helping out in the kitchen, doesn't yes, she? Yes, she's very shy, um, and so she doesn't talk a lot outside of her home. And she also loves Kazi, her cook, and she just has this very comfortable relationship with him. Because her father's a little standoffish, and he's a doctor, and he's very busy. So she has this real friendship with Kazi, and it's a way for her to express herself without talking um, and bond in the kitchen. She really loves cooking. She prepares many, many uh, different dishes, and we're going to make one of the uh, yes. dishes Today. Yes. And what are we going to make? It's called saibaji. Saibaji. It, yes. So what's that and mean? So it means green vegetable, uh -huh. and um, you can make it with really any kind of green vegetables. This is an old recipe passed down, probably from my grandmother. I got it from my aunts. Is it a Indian recipe or a Pakistani recipe? The area that my father grew up in is now Pakistan. It's an area called Sindh. So he, when he grew up, it was India. So I think of it as, you know, there are, there are Sindhi Muslims and Sindhi Hindus. So he's a Sindhi Hindu and left for, you know, over the border to the new India. And a lot of Sindhi Hindus left and went all over the world, really. Um, so I think of it as a Sindhi recipe. Well, let's first see what we need to make this recipe. Again, this is my family recipe and I've seen it made in different ways, different recipes. Mm -hmm. Some people use potatoes, some people use other green vegetables. Um, so this is the way my, my aunties make it. Yeah, so okay. what do we have here? So what we have is um, I use some ginger puree. You can use fresh grated ginger about an inch 
cube or a very generous tablespoon. Generous tablespoon, yes. Yes, of ginger. And then this is a green chili chopped up. It depends how spicy you want. Uh, the recipe, my family recipe for this amount says five chilies. And five. I thought five, these are five really spicy. These, yes. Yeah, well, so I just chopped one. Good. It depends. Yes. Um, uh, six cloves of garlic, a bunch of dill, one chopped onion, um, the lemons, we're going to use lemon juice, and you add that a little later in the cooking process. And the turmeric, which is ground uh, turmeric, kind of a sort of a mustardy flavored mm -hmm. spice. And you can buy it, it looks like ginger, and you can grate it fresh. I always buy the ground. I thought this was an Indian uh, recipe, but we have Italian uh, tomatoes. Chopped tomatoes, a good brand yes. of chopped tomatoes. Yes. So we do. Uh, I do a half a cup of chopped tomatoes. Half a cup yes. of chopped tomatoes. And then the spinach, this is 16 ounces of chopped frozen spinach. So and I'm some water that you kind of add, two cups of water. Right, and the good thing is it's all in one pot. Yeah. I love the cover of the book. That is the finished copy, and I just love the way it kind of glistens. Yes. The, the night sky. The night sky and the little foil stars that just were, made me so happy to see it all sparkly. So now I guess we kind of dump the things. Yeah, so we'll start with the in? spinach. Oh, well, well, yes. So we just. I can do that. Put that. You want to scrape that spoon. out? Oh, there yeah. You go. And uh, those uh, yellow Chana lentils. Dal. So what, what, what are they called again? Chana dal. Oh, well. And some ginger. The ginger, yes. Got the chilies. Chilies. And what do you have on your side there? The I onions. Have, I have the onion. Yes. Yes. So I just go like this. I could do that. Uh, uh, half uh, a cup uh, of the, uh, the uh, dill. Oh, the dill. Right. Just yeah. So right you don't right want the you. tomatoes to really overpower the spinach, uh -huh. but they give it a nice acidy taste. Clean. Stir it up, and as it cooks, we add water and kind of okay. cook it down. Uh, what is this called again? Turmeric. Turmeric. And uh, do I sprinkle it around like that? Yeah. Sprinkle it around. Oh, oh. We're going to add a little salt. And you can kind of add the salt to taste as you I'll cook. let you, I'll let you yeah, handle so. that. So this is uh, half a teaspoon of salt. You can add more to taste. Right. So you just mix it all together and put it on the stove. And as it starts cooking down, you start adding the water and mixing in. And then you just don't want it to be too watery. So you cook it basically, usually for about a half an hour. Okay, so why don't we go to the Kidlit TV stove? I'll okay. grab the pot and here we go. <laughs> so we've been busy. We've been simmering the the saibaji. Let me say that saibaji, yes. which is very nutritious. It yeah, is. It's, uh, well, it's vegetable. A great way to have vegetables. Absolutely. And if you're sick, it it will make you well. One of the things I've been doing is I've been squeezing two lemons, which equal a quarter of yep. a cup of lemon juice. You put that in after the water cooks down a little bit. This isn't the first time food is featured in one of your books. No. You've written a few other books that have I, food in them. My first middle grade novel, The Whole Story of Half a Girl, there's just a lot of food in their lives mm -hmm. because I feel like when you have a scene um, and they're having a meal, I need to know, as the reader, what they're having. I feel like food can tell a lot about people. Mm -hmm. It can tell about their personalities, their cultures. Um, and then I have a chapter book series called Phoebe G. Green, mm -hmm. which it's about a third grade girl who discovers that she's a foodie. So there's a lot of food in those books. And then this, um, I always am using food in different ways in my books. And this Nisha, it's a way for her to express herself. And Saibaji is one of her favorite dishes in the night diary. So it continues to simmer, so we need to put a lid on that? Yes. As I said, put a lid on it. So you put a lid on it and simmer it for about 20 minutes, a half an hour, just make sure everything's soft, and the onions, the chana dal, everything's kind of cooked together. Well, let's see how it's doing. Ooh, looks good. Stir it up. So do you think it's, it's done? Down. Yeah, I think it's done. I want to try something. We have these two bowls here. Okay, yeah. great. And usually it's a side dish. Mm -hmm. It's just a nice thing on a cold day or a warm day. It smells good. And cheers. Cheers. Yes, I can't <laughs> wait to try yeah, it. It's hot. Mmm. Taste the lemon. Very good. And the dill. Thank you so much for being here, and the book is The Night Diary. 
And thank you for having me. It, it was, was so a, much fun. It was a pleasure. So remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format.